Good evening and welcome to this episode of Navigating the Digital Space. And before we dwell into the world of digital space, I'd like to make a few preliminary remarks that will help us understand and put things in context. So let's start with these remarks. The first is that the digital space is constantly evolving and changing and navigating the space is both tricky and complicated. The pre-pandemic time where excessive use of media gadgets was frowned upon, but now is the new normal. Education, faith, wellness, health, essential supplies and even non-essential supplies have capitalized on the availability of the digital platforms to reach people and provide them with services that they were deprived of by the lockdown and by social distancing. And that's a reality that we're facing today. The next is that we're living in an age of mediated communications. People would rather text and call. It's not that we're not communicating today. It's just that we're communicating differently via our gadgets, our devices. Now, it's imperative for us to know a few fundamentals, a few fundamental principles, so to say, so that we adhere to these principles to ensure that we are in control of the tools of communication and that we are not controlled by them. So let's get into that. The first understanding is nothing in life is free. In the world of social media, we, the users, are the product. Now, social media through artificial intelligence understands our likes, our preferences, my friends, do you remember the days of the banner affair when they used to have these wonderful stalls called the funny mirrors? You would enter in and you would have these different mirrors that were out there and they would give you distortions of yourself. So you would be fat or thin or have a concocted face or a long face and that was a lot of fun. But that analogy in a very strong way sums up what social media does. Social media through artificial intelligence understands our preferences and targets them. My friends, my contacts, my interest, my activity on the web is the bubble, the hall of mirrors, the echo chamber that feeds our thoughts, our perceptions, and creates a distortion of the reality that exists. The Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma, effectively presents this reality. And the link to the official trailer is available in the description that is in this video. It'll be a good idea for you to have a look at this particular documentary. The next is the WhatsApp universe or the University of WhatsApp which feeds the stream of information and disinformation and lies and most gullible individuals forward information without verification. Often it suits the ideology of the person doing the forwarding. The next that we need to look at is this famous quote of Mr. Charles Bukowski. He's an author and media expert and he sums up the situation we're facing today wonderfully when he says, the problem with the world today is that the intelligent people are full of doubts while the stupid ones are full of confidence. And that's precisely the scenario that we find ourselves today. Therefore, how do we navigate the digital space as adults? And how do we assist children to navigate these uncertain times, these uncertain waters? So let's look at a few things that we as adults can do. The first thing that we as adults need to do is develop our critical thinking. So what then is critical thinking? Critical thinking is a method of thinking true that produces concepts, ideas, arguments, assumptions and conclusions that are a valid, that is correspond to a reality, plausible and accurate and b useful, help us reach specific goals. Now, the art of critical thinking is a process that will not lead you to straight or complete or absolute truths. 
It, however, helps you detect and avoid its opposite. The lies, the deception, the propaganda. The next principle is to verify before you forward. This requires us to engage in a simple three-step method. The first is access and find out available information. Just because you've received information from a trusted source doesn't make it true. Search online for corroboration of more than one source. Second, verify. If it's meaningful and valid, does sharing provide valid and useful information, resolve a situation, or add wisdom to a discussion? If it does not bring meaning or validity, best not to forward it. The third is evaluate with precision and rigor. Context is extremely important. Now take this for an example. A man with a mask takes a knife to the belly of a woman. Is it surgery or is it murder? The context gives us the understanding. So contextualize and analyze the meaning, taking into consideration who originated and distributed it. This will help verify if it is propaganda or news. The third is to understand how misinformation and disinformation works. And there are seven types of misinformation or disinformation. The first is false connection, where headlines and visuals or captions don't support the content. And you'll see it in the slides that we are showing at the moment. False context when genuine content is shared with false contextual information. The third, manipulated content. When genuine information or imagery is manipulated to deceive. The fourth is satire or parody. No intention to harm but has the potential to fool. Like that famous example that was doing its circles on WhatsApp of Pope Francis resigning. And they were showing footage of Pope Benedict flying out in a helicopter. And so many WhatsApp messages circulating, oh my God, Pope Francis resigned. That was one of those examples. The fifth is misleading content. Misleading content uses information to frame an issue or an individual. The sixth is imposter content when genuine sources are impersonated. And the last, the seventh, is fabricated content. New content that is 100% false, designed to deceive and to do harm. Now, there are additional problems that we encounter and we need to address. One of the biggest banes of our time is the multiplicity of WhatsApp groups. There is an overload of information with numerous messages coming at all times of the day and night. Group admins of WhatsApp groups should put out those who post or share information that have no relevance to the reason why that group was formed in the first place. Due warning, of course, should be given before this course of action is taken. Another issue we encounter is being put into WhatsApp group without our consent. Depending on your device, here is the way in which you can ensure that no one can put you into a group without your consent. Now, let me just explain this to you. Depending on the phone you have, and you will see it both in screenshots on your screen, whether it's an Android or an iPhone, click on that settings button on your phone. On your iPhones, it's on the bottom. On an Android device, it's on the top of the screen when you open WhatsApp. Once you get into settings, you enter into the area called accounts. Once you enter into accounts, you enter the area which says privacy. And once you enter into privacy, there is an aspect called groups. And once you enter into groups, you can put the settings in a way that ensure that only those who can add you will be able to add you and no one can add you unless you give your consent. A simple way to make sure 
that you're not forced into groups you don't want to be in. The next is fatigue. In this work from home environment, have break times. Get up, take a walk, stretch, do eye exercises every hour for five minutes and I'm going to give you a few demonstrations. So some of the exercises you need to do could be just a simple stretch like this. Your hands going up, rotating your hands. These are simple things. Getting up from your chair. These are things you need to do. Another thing because you're staring very often at the computer screen and you know with this new work from home environment the volume of work has increased tremendously. The number of hours have worked in, uh, tremendously. So the number of hours and the volume of work has increased tremendously but the salaries have not. So what you need to do in this particular period of time is try to take that break every five minutes in an hour and either stretching exercise, deep breathing exercise or even just rub your palms so that you generate some heat and then put it over your eyes so that it just calms the eyes because you're constantly looking at a backlit device and that backlit device causes your eyes over a period of time to water to give you some kind of eye irritation. So you need to do these exercises every five minutes. Believe me, it won't take up too much of your time, but it'll improve your health tremendously. Okay, let's get back. The next is intrusiveness. The digital space overtakes our personal boundaries in a manner that is alarming. So cultivate a sense of personal space. Set aside time for your spirituality, your fitness, hobbies, but find space for yourself. Number five is unhealthy disruptions. Sometimes we get so caught up in our digital space that we forget real-time essentials. Eat at the right time and away from your workstation or your computer. Take that break. Number six, rest. Power off your devices and power yourself off. I, for one, switch off my phone every night from 10.30 p.m. to 4 a.m. Number seven, make real connections with people, friends and family. With a call, not a text. Don't assume that they are busy and you're disturbing them. Ask politely if it is a good time to call. And if they're busy, they will tell you so. The saddest thing is that people don't call each other thinking that the other will be disturbed and the gap grows wider. Make that call and watch the misapprehension disappear for you and for the person you called. Wish people you care about with a call, a video, and not a WhatsApp text. Share. Have time together as a family where you talk, you share, you pray, and you come together and eat together. A wonderful idea is the phone basket. Now, let me explain what this is all about. You see, in the good old days, we used to have the landlines. And when there was a call that came in, you would go to the phone, you would pick it up, you would answer it, you would answer the call, you would finish your conversation, you would put the phone back and you would join the family again. That's precisely what the phone basket is all about. Put your phones into a basket when you have family time. If it rings and it's urgent, you go, you answer it, finish your call, place it back in the basket, come back to the family time. This is a good idea when you're having meals together. It's a good idea when you're having time together where you're talking and interacting as a family. It's worth giving it a shot. The phone basket concept has been an effective tool to ensure sharing and communication happens in real time among family members. Now, for children, since there is not much time in this episode, we will dwell deeper on children in a later episode. But remember that example is the best teacher. Children will look at how you manage and navigate your time in the digital space. Your instructions mean nothing unless you yourself follow them. And the guidelines just given apply to them as well. Since children are not as emotionally savvy as they are techno savvy, you need to monitor their online time and space. But do this in a collaborative way, as a friendly chat in real time. The world of digital space provides us with a range of opportunities and challenges. 
I do hope that this brief input facilitates your journey as you navigate the world of cyberspace. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. Stay safe.